Here we are again this week. We are going to continue discussing the real estate contract for residential property, and hopefully we'll get through more than two pages today. I'm Brandy with the Come Home team of Better Homes and Gardens, and I have a tip for you if you're selling your house. Well, I'm not going to waste any time. We're jumping right into page 11. Page 11, section 19, talks about the termite control requirements. There are three options that your buyer might select. Part A, there are no requirements. Part B, the buyer is requesting a letter of clearance and they're asking you as the seller to have a termite policy in place, perform a termite inspection, and then at closing, pay for that termite policy to transfer to them as the new owners of the home. Part C is other, and if I'm being completely honest, I've never seen anything filled out in this section. Section 20 is pretty straightforward. It talks about lead-based paint, and part A says that the buyer understands the property was not constructed prior to 1978, and so there is no risk for lead-based paint. Part B says the buyer has been informed that the property was constructed prior to 1978, and so now you as the seller have three business days once this contract has been executed to provide the buyer with a lead-based paint disclosure. The buyer then has 10 calendar days to inform an inspection, and if they are unsatisfied with the results, they can actually terminate the contract without you even agreeing to it. Okay, so moving right along to page 12, section 22 talks about closing. This is the section where the buyer identifies what day they would like to close on the property. Now, you as the seller and also the buyer have the right to choose any closing agent that you want to, and you can also request a closing protection letter. And what that does is it protects you as the seller for any funds that are distributed incorrectly because of a mistake that was made by the closing agent. If for some reason you need to change the closing date, you can do so in writing. It's called a closing date modification, which is another legal form that we will review down the road. The closing section is also where it talks about how this real estate contract is provided to the title company or your closing agent, and it acts as written instructions for the closing. Section 23 talks about possession, and it says possession of the property shall be delivered to the buyer either A, upon closing, B, delayed possession, or C, prior to closing. Now, if the buyer is selecting B or C, there are additional addendums that have to accompany this real estate contract which of course we will review down the road. Section 24 talks about assignment and basically this is saying that this contract, this real estate contract cannot be reassigned to another buyer without the consent from you as the seller. And you can't be unreasonable about that. But if for example, they are reassigning the buyer because of financing, you do not have to agree to that. All right, we've reached four minutes, so I gotta cut it off. We are going to finish the real estate contract for residential property next week, I promise. So make sure that you come back and you'll know all there is to know about the real estate contract for residential property. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.